Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Christenberry Fieldhouse, and welcome to another season of Augusta University basketball. Along with Chad Cook and Blake Collins, I'm John Patrick. Uh, as we get started on another year of AU basketball, a year of transition, a year of change, and uh, we will document a lot of that as we get through the first couple of games of the year. But we will begin by telling you tonight's game is an exhibition game um, against Georgia Southern. And uh, we are playing this to benefit Hurricane Relief. So we've got the Red Cross here. We'll talk a little bit about the Red Cross during the broadcast. We'll talk a little bit about Hurricane Relief. But that's the reason we have gathered here for this uh, exhibition game at Christenberry Fieldhouse to get the... Uh, to get the season started, although actually the Jags were in action last night as uh, they were at Clemson taking on the Tigers. Uh, Chad, you were at the basketball game. Yeah, what a great opportunity to go play it, an ACC team on one night and then host another Division I team the next night. So the Jags uh, took an early lead on Clemson last night, 24-13, led 28-20 at one point, took a 33-31 lead into the half. Great uh, contributions from the front line. We have something like eight years of starting experience in our starting five, and it showed last night um, in the second half they were too much for us. We lost 80 to 56. Well, I also heard we got into some foul trouble. And yeah, it was uh, inevitable with the size and the offensive rebounding. Now, we, we out-rebounded them in the first half, but it, it, the tables were turned after halftime. Uh, we are going to uh, pause for our national anthem. We'll come back with our starting lineups for tonight's ball game. We're glad you're with us. We hope you're going to be with us all season long. So uh, thanks for being here, our national anthem. And let's go down our starting lineups for this evening's ball game. Starting at center, first for the Georgia Southern team. Starting at center, 6'8", 230-pound junior from Carrollton, Georgia, number zero, Monty Glenn. Starting at guard, a 6'3", 190-pound senior from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, number two, Mike Hughes. 
Starting at guard, a 6'4", 210-pound junior from Gainesville, Florida, number three, Ike Smith. Starting at guard, a 5'11", 180-pound junior from Madison, Georgia, number four, Tukey Brown. And starting at guard, a 6'5", 185-pound senior from Nashville, Tennessee, number 10, Jake Allsmiller. And now for the Jaguars, and we'll be meeting some new Jaguars tonight and this season. Some familiar names, though, starting at forward, a 6'6 senior, a 209-pounder from Augusta, number two, Demiric Fields. Starting at forward, a 6'5", 218-pound senior from Augusta, number 11, Kyle Doyle. Starting at forward, a 6'2", 225-pound junior from Alexandria, Virginia, number 13, Tyvez Monroe. Starting at forward, a 6'3", 197-pound freshman from Bergen, Norway, number 22, Mikkel Coldstaff. And starting at forward, a 6'8", 219-pound junior from Bristol, England, number 24, Dean Williams. Now, a couple of, couple of notes here concerning the starting five. First of all, let's talk about someone who's not in the starting five. And is, well, first of all, Keyshawn is gone. We've had Keyshawn right. for a few years, but also Ben Ursich. Yes, well, Ben Ursich and Keyshawn are not with us anymore. And Ben, uh, I, I will tell you the next game exactly what the opportunity that he took was, okay. but it was a good one. Much like Vlad Kobzaru will do after this season. He's a junior, but he will enter the dental school here at Augusta University next year, and it won't allow him to play basketball because of the commitment. It's a, sure. ev evidently a very strenuous program. And so uh, Ben's opportunity is back in Australia, where he's from, where he's from. but I can't remember the details PT. on that. So, um, he's, going for, he's going to PT class. Oh, you are. You yes. do know. Yes, I'm sorry. He's going to PT class. Excellent. Um, and 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 as you said, same opportunity. It's better over there. The school year is obviously different, yeah. um, because they're, you know, this is beginning of their spring. Okay. Um, so uh, so Ben Ben, because Ben was a sophomore or a junior he was a sophomore he's he been a junior and then Keyshawn, to Keyshawn over, is uh you know he's playing pro ball yep. in, in the netherlands and playing great so we've been tracking him at augb ball but um you know we have to the court here we have a lot of experience on this court four of these guys have been major contributors for two years and Tamrick Fields for three years. And it showed last night. It didn't show for 40 minutes, but it showed for about 23 minutes last night. And, um, and the Jags were able to take a lead over an ACC school. Um, the strength is along the front line. Even Tyvez Monroe, the shooting guard, is built like a tank. And he right. gets a lot done in the paint. So we, get, we, we do our damage in the paint. If we could get a guy like Tyvez Monroe and Mikhail Kolstad to uh, make some shots, that will help. And also Aaron Bird off the bench. Derek Oliver made a three last night. Um, so we're optimistic. So we are going to learn as you will this year. It's, uh, to, to Chad, to your point, it's, it's a lot of the same players, but it feels so very different this year. Well, Keyshawn has been etched into yeah. our memory forever, and it was, a, it was a great run his four seasons, no doubt about it. And we'll probably talk about that throughout the season. <laughs> it's so memorable. <laughs> And this would be Monte Glenn, right? He's a tough one. The Georgia Southern coming out of the Sun Belt Conference, they're picked four uh, as the fourth team in the Sun Belt Conference. They have a pair of guards who are all league juniors, and we'll talk a lot about them tonight. I can't help but think we've got our first foul of the ball. Game. Well, that's a jump ball. I no, think. A jump ball. Yeah. I can't help but think um, Division One school Clemson last night, Division One school tonight. It, it, it can't do anything but improve these the Jaguars oh yes oh yes it's uh you know th these games don't count right they actually don't count um the, the openers next week at Barton College um uh, and so that's what uh they tally for the postseason tournaments and things like that but it but it counts sure um, you remember the buzz last season yeah. when the Jags uh came a couple points away from upsetting Wichita State a top 10 team in the nation and that excitement carried the Jags through um a, a good part of the beginning of the season if they were able to beat Georgia Southern on well, their home floor tonight a similar thing would well happen. that that's the thing that strikes my mind that the Jags would love to win in this ball game, but it strikes me that Clemson last night, Georgia Southern tonight, don't want to lose. Of course not. And Dip called it not ideal to have to play these schools back to back. I mean, uh, you know, they don't even do that during the regular right. season. 
Jags with the basketball now. Tybez tries getting it in. A lot of pressure. So the Jags have had two cracks at it and haven't gotten a shot up at the rim yet, uh, feeling the pressure early. Monte Glenn has established a presence inside, but there's Dean Williams with the rebound. Dean playing very well last night from what I hear. He did, 11 points, nine rebounds. He was uh, the standout of the game. Also made two big block shots to save baskets. Tybez looks like he's lost a little weight. Yeah, he's um, he looks good. He's been yeah. the most consistent player at practice, according to Coach Dick Mitras. Uh, Tybez is the leading returning scorer, yeah. 11 points per game, shot 38% from the field. Um, we have four guys who averaged between 9 and 11 points per game last season, and they all scored between 9 and 11 points versus Clemson last night. Monte Glenn with the foul, his first, team's first. Now, what's going on mentioned so far is that Cal Doyle with the ball here, he transferred from Georgia Southern, so he's played for these Eagles. Doyle, the Augusta native. And Tybez. That is just what the doctor ordered. Um, it's some kind of long-range barrage from a guy like Tyvez Monroe would be exactly what this Augusta team needs to break through. Scored f only 56 points last night. Yeah, after a pretty good first half. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 23 in the second half. Not up to par, so we'll see if they can get on the board early. There's Monroe again. Shot's no good. Eagles with the rebound. So th this is Ike Smith. He scored 23 points in a blowout victory, 92-59 uh, over Georgia College of the Peach Belt just Wednesday in a, another exhibition game. There's Doyle, the former Georgia Southern Eagle. Tries throws that one away. Inside to TC. Batted away. Here come the Eagles. Now this is Tookie Brown. He has a storied history in this area. I'll get to it in a little while. They look inside for Glenn. He's going to be trouble, I think, for the Jags, although that was well defended. There's three Jags on him, and they come away with the basketball. Very well defended by Augusta. Good job. Quick hands by Kyle Doyle. He has so much game, kind of an undersized big, but he does a lot of good things. That's Kyle Doyle. He drives on in, can't score. Ike Smith comes away with it. Left side three, front of the rim no good. Got some substitutions. So neither team particularly sharp offensively. Um, I mentioned Tookie Brown. He just missed that three from the left corner. Tookie Brown played high school ball at Morgan County, won a state title, knocked Laney out of the semifinals of the state tournament by scoring 32 points in the second half alone his senior year. That would have been 2015. He's an all-league performer at the Sun in the Sun Belt along with Ike Smith. Vlad Cobazaro checks in for the Jags. Kyle takes the shot. Well, no, Tybez Monroe. No, Tybez. Yeah. So that's two for him. He's two for three, both from the same spot. I said it earlier, he has been the most consistent player at practice. He played well last night versus Clemson. He's going to have a great two seasons here to finish off his Jags career. This is the only newcomer in the group, Mikel Colstead. He yeah. What do we know about Mikel? He practiced with the team last year and pr impressed everybody from day one. And he played on the, oh, I hope I get this right, the Norwegian um, like national, te team. national team this summer. Played well for him. There he is. There's a shot. Doesn't get the roll. There's Tukey Brown with an isolation. This Pretty back, good huh? D by Augusta, I'll tell you. That's a tough shot. He made it, but that, they worked for every bit of that shot. Jake Allsmiller with the basket. It's a defensive battle here early. Well, I also think it's in many, it's game two for both. They're finding their way. Certainly, and this, and this game was not scheduled right. one, one week ago, as you know. That's Kyle right there, lays it up and in. 
Tyvez Monroe doing it all, making two threes, creating for Doyle there. I hope Doyle can get loose out there and, and, and be confident because, uh, you know, I know he'd love to have a big game against his former team. Dean with the rebound. Tyvez turned the ball over. Yeah. Here's our media timeout, 14.36 to go in the first half, and the Jags are up 8-4. We should mention men's basketball hosts their first official game of the 2017-2018 season on the 25th against uh, Bowie State. They will host 4 o'clock tip-off here at Christenberry Fieldhouse. So again, the Jags will open up their home schedule on the 25th here at the Fieldhouse. Willie Jules Barbecue was a proud sponsor and supporter of the Jaguars Visit Willie Jules Old School Barbecue on Riverwatch Parkway or check out WillieJules.com. Back at Christenberry Fieldhouse, Jags are up four. We do want to mention you can text Red Cross to 90999 to give $10 to the American Red Cross Disaster Relief, which uh, helps people affected by disasters like hurricanes, floods, earthquake, wildfires, and tornadoes, as uh, this game was scheduled for uh, to help with hurricane relief. And you know what? I think a decent, you know, for a Friday night, game at the last minute not a bad yeah, crowd you're competing with high school football the sure game, the game wasn't scheduled and um you know this is the first division one game i don't know if I, we've mentioned this first division one game in this gym since 1992 oh really yeah when the jags were a division one, one team. team yeah so this is uh this is a big night funny to say about an exhibition game. This is a big yeah. game. <laughs> it's but also it, the first exhibition game I can remember the, in a while the Jags playing at home. Oh, yeah, yeah. Been yeah. on the road uh, All Army a couple years ago, yeah. but not against a college team. So here's Vlad Kobzaru. And he travels. Dib tries to be in midseason form. <laughs> so we've had Aaron Bird check in the game. He's a junior. Tons of experience, averaged four points per game last year, shot 42% from three-point land. And Derek Oliver's entered the game, and he shot uh, three the other night, and that was about more shots than I saw him <laughs> take all last yeah, year. Yeah, he didn't take many. He's been um, shooting well in practice, and he's uh, quick off the bench here this year in exhibition play. Quan Jackson in the game for the Eagles, along with Coy Simmons and Jared Hamilton. Brown's tough off that screen and roll. There's a little uh, bump by Vlad Kobzaro trying to hedge on that screen and roll. Going to be his, his first and the team's first. Two new Eagles check in. You know, one thing I've noticed in the last two nights um, is that the sets for Augusta University are exactly the same as they were when Keyshawn was here. So, you know, you just uh, coach has a system and great players shine in that system. Um, and, and, and I wouldn't say he did anything special for Keyshawn. He just, Keyshawn executed specially. Well, you know, the question I was going to ask is we've talked about Tyvez here early in the ball game. You know, Dip has had a leader on the court for the last three years. Will Tyvez be that yeah, leader? Yeah, or, or, or and, does and Dip want Will that? Dean is Dip that looking leader? for that? Does Dip, is you know, in basket there for... Aaron Bird. Aaron Bird. And this team is full of leaders, and but of course he does. He would love 12 leaders. And, sure. And and he needs one. He needs one right now um, because it's season time, and um, I think he's confident he has them. He told me before the season he had two for sure players who would want to shoot the ball when pressure was at its sure. highest, and he thought maybe he could get to three or four. I know he would love eight or nine, and that's what leadership's about, uh, being willing to step out on that ledge. Um, Aaron Bird is a great example. He only averaged four points a game last year, but he shot 42% from the three line, and he makes he has made big shots since coming on campus. Just made one there to put the Jags up 11-4. 
Tybez with the basketball and gets it back to Derrick. I like the way the guys are playing. They're finding each other on the offensive glass. Derrick draws the foul. You can't guard Derrick around the basket. I've noticed that. He's, a, he's, a, um, he's an inside player. And that was my attempt at humor. So there you go. Not very good, though. That's okay. Fouls on Sean O'Connell. Sean's first, team's third. And uh, Derek will go to the line. You know, the question I, I'll have for the time being is, is Augusta going to be able to score enough points? Um, you know, 56 last night, 23 in the second half. It's against Clemson. It's against an ACC opponent. But the guys, like I said earlier, the guys who are – playing leadership roles are all used to averaging 9, 10 points a game, and that's what they did last night. So I want to see if somebody, uh, you know, or if a couple guys will break out, you know, into that 15, 20 area. Shot from the right side, no good by Jackson. We're going to have an offensive foul on the Jags. I like what uh, Monroe had in mind there. Just, uh, you know, good defensive play, sticking your body in there by the Georgia Southern player. Tyvez picks up his first, team second. Now, now speaking of that offensive foul on Tyvez Monroe, a big thing for Coach Dimitris has been these guys need to stay out of foul trouble because it's not the deepest team in the world. Yeah. Derek with the basketball. and then commits the foul. What do we know about, um, well, here's our media timeout. We'll get back to that. 11.53 to go, first half. Jags are up 11-4. Augusta University Athletics recognizes Augusta Coca-Cola for its longtime support of the Jaguars and all of its student athletes. Coca-Cola is the official Powerade and bottled water supplier to the Jaguars. Back at Christenberry Fieldhouse, 11.53 to go in the first half. Exhibition game between the Jaguars and the Eagles from Georgia Southern. Jags are up 11-4. So what do you know, if anything, about Jack Foley? Well, Jack Foley's a, a tall young man. He's a freshman, 6 foot 11. Um, I, I mean, I hope, well, I, I just don't know. Sometimes yeah. guys redshirt. Yeah. And, and, and I just don't want to say that that's a plan when, Maybe, maybe who knows what I know, but that's something that has been in my mind. And um, he can play in exhibition games and still redshirt. Anybody can. So uh, that's what I know about that. I know he's, uh, you know, I've seen him play in practice and, you know, brings to mind Garrett Silas. Yeah. You know. it, and, that, and that's why it's exciting because we live in a conference where there aren't many really, really big men. Right. And when there is, they do kind of stand out. Well, um, so it's curious, uh, you know, it, 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 what Jack will become. Yeah, well, and I think the truth is that he'll either become a really, really, really good player because he'll take advantage of all the opportunities that he'll have to improve, or maybe he won't, but there's kind of no in-between. A guy either catches on or he doesn't, yeah. and I'm, I'm optimistic. I've seen him do things that make me know that he knows how to play the game, okay. so he's just got to um, adjust to this level of basketball. TC goes up for the shot, and we've got a foul. Foul is on. Sean O'Connell, it is Sean's second, team's fifth. TC will go to the line. 
So that's the first time we've had um, that Augusta has had a situation where they got something positive out of a post up. I would say that most of the points against Clemson were scored that way. You had tonight a quick flurry by Tyvez Monroe and Aaron Bird. And so, um, you know, you see Tamrick here going to the line for two. You see Dean checking in. Those are the kinds of players along with Kyle Doyle that I expect to uh, have some success in that post, even against a bigger, maybe slightly bigger Division One opponent. TC makes them both, and uh, Dean is checking back in. You know, if you look at those three front line players for Augusta, we are actually maybe have a size advantage. So it's interesting how uh, the Division II school uh, m might have that situation. Drive down the lane and scoring the basket is Tukey. Yeah, I um, yeah I heard that was uh, and, and obviously with Clemson ACC school. That was an issue last night. Of course, yes. That's a great uh, play. You know, Tukey basically heard me talking about all this size stuff, and he said, "Hey, it doesn't matter how tall you are; it's how how you get to the basket and finish." That was a great little play off the pick and roll. And Dean from about. 17 feet with the basket. That's just pretty. Um, you know, when he does stuff like that, it gets people excited. Um, he did that last night twice against Clemson. If he can make jump shots, wow, what a player, because he's already blocking shots, rebounding, finishing at the rim, and making foul shots. And, you know, Dean is, you know, formally, Coach Dip would tell you that he's playing the three. Yeah. Um, now, in practice, I would say that all three of our frontline players do an equal amount of posting up and catching the ball and working from the perimeter, and I think that's a strength. But Coach Dip would definitely say he's a three, and he looked like a three on that play. TC with the foul away from the ball, his first. Jags always play zone out of that inbounds on the baseline. So they give up a jumper, and it's good for Ike Smith. Nickel Colstaff back in the game for the Jags. Jags back with their starting lineup. Tukey commits that foul. His first. Sixth team foul on the Eagles. And there's three for Nickel Coldstaff. So coming into this game, I would have said, can the Jags make um, perimeter shots, you know, at a consistent basis? And they've made four of them already in the first 10 minutes of the game. It's good defense. This front line is tough, and they are, they are playing as a team defensively, the Jags. B.J. Gladden in the game for the Eagles. Inside, turn around, gets the roll, mm. yes. Kyle Doyle with four points against his former team. That was a sweet little play. I just say it, I feel like I say it every time we broadcast a game. Kyle Doyle has a lot of game. He gets the ball and does a lot of things with it from a lot of different angles, and he's going to have a big game tonight, I think. couple straight buckets for Mike yeah, Smith. Man. He's the one. He, he and Tookie Brown are the all-league performers, the all-sun belt players. We see Dean Williams bring the ball to the court here against Ike Smith. Tyvez on the right side. Kyle Doyle wants it. Let's see if he gets it here. Nope. Mikel bats it out of bounds. Be Eagles basketball. Hughes, no good. Dean Smith pulls down that rebound. Dean Williams, Dean all Williams, over the glass. All alone. And an easy two for TC. Timeout, Eagles. 8.13 to go, first half. Jags have doubled the score. It's 22-11. Jags. Jaguar Club needs your support and your membership. Call the Athletics Office at 737-1626 or visit the Jaguars' official athletics website. You're on it right now. AugustaJags.com for more information about how to become a Jaguar Club member.
8.13 to go, first half. Jags are up 22-11. Exhibition game to benefit Hurricane Relief here at the Christenberry Fieldhouse as we get the 2017-2018 season started. Jags will be home for the first time on the 25th. Dean wow. might have gotten away with something there. Nice basket for Jared Hamilton. It's a really well defended play by the Jags, but they didn't finish with the defensive rebound, and they paid for it. A little bit of pressure applied by the Eagles. I heard that was the pressure last night from the Tigers that kind of gave the Jags fits. Yeah, like Kyle Doyle right there, he threw one away last night, thrown two away today. Needs to uh, be a little more sure with the ball. And now Dip would like a timeout. Four unanswered points by the Jags, 22-15. Dips all over Kyle Doyle. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> 7.23 to go, first half. Jags up seven. Back at Christenberry Fieldhouse, 7.23 to go, first half again. Text Red Cross to 90999 and give $10 to American Red Cross Disaster Relief, helping people affected by disasters like hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, wildfires, and tornadoes. That is why we are here playing this game tonight. Back court. Oh. That was the worst thing that Tyvez Monroe could have done, crossed half court and picked up the ball. So now he's got three defenders on him, basically two people and then that back uh, that half court line behind him so how quickly tables can turn Jags go up 22 11 Georgia Southern calls timeout and two plays later it's 22 15 Dimitris is forced to call timeout and then we come out with a turnover so let's see if the Jags can hold strong here and uh, get some of this momentum back Ooh, pretty good defense there a little fade that, away is better good. shot you know, so I see Dean Williams guarding Ike Smith. I like that, that he's taken the challenge. He, he's, uh, he's up to it, I think. Smith has seven. The pressure. Good hustle by Williams. Yeah. He could have been close to traveling there, but here come the Eagles. And they score. Gerald Hamilton with his fourth point, and now the Eagles are back to within three. So that's back-to-back -back turnovers by Jags guards in uh, Colstaff and Monroe, and there's another one. This will be... 10 unanswered. No, he misses it. There's 10 unanswered points by the Eagles. Jags are going to have to play through this. You got Kyle Doyle and Aaron Bird coming in. Timeout. Here's Dip's timeout. 6.20 to go. First half. Jags are now just up by one. 22-21. Athletics is proud to welcome back the Health Center Credit Union as a corporate partner for the Jaguars. HCCU is the official credit union and financial institution of the Jaguars and Augusta University. So at least in this moment, we'll see if uh, Bird for Colstaff is the change that's needed for the Jags to right this ship. Again, a little bit of pressure applied by the Eagles. Bird did a good job there. A little tentative, I think, for the Jags. I feel like Monroe might have had a shot there that he passed up. They've only got two on the shot clock. Yeah. Well, a lot of empty possessions here in a row for the Jags. 
The only, the only uh, saving grace there is that it wasn't a live ball turnover that led to a layup. You're going to have to get, get some rhythm here offensively somehow. Jake Allsmiller is back in the game for the Eagles. Score the basket and the foul. It's going to be on Vlad. It's going to be a second. You talked about leadership earlier. Yeah. You, know, you talked about leadership. This is a time for a leader to step up. Um, what, 12 straight points working on 13 here from the Eagles. 11 point deficit becomes a maybe a two point advantage for Georgia Southern here. Derek checks back in for the Jags. Vlad sits. And they make the free throw, and they're up two. A lot of trouble with this half court trap. It'll be a offensive foul. Tavez Monroe pleading with his teammates to, you know, settle down. Fouls on Kyle. It's his first. Team's sixth. Jags have led most of this ball game, but now find themselves down two. Really haven't gotten a shot off in a few minutes. Yeah. That one from Tavez Monroe was as close as they got to an opportunity, and that wasn't much of one. It's Aaron, Kyle, Derek, Tyvez, and Dean on the floor for the Jags. Hamilton, Brown, Gladden, Allsmiller, and uh, Simmons on the court for the Eagles. Fight for the rebound. Derek gets himself in there. Ties up. Ball will stay with the Eagles. What a shot by Tukey Brown. Four points for Brown. Increases the Eagle lead to four. The kids call that the Dirk move. I'm sorry, the Dirk move? Yeah, Dirk like Nowitzki. Nowitzki. Yeah, yeah. He, he goes off that back yeah, foot. Yeah, that back foot, that's true. Derek has the ball batted away. There's Brown again. Well, I thought we were going to find Brown. That was going to be on Derek. It's going to be his second. Seventh team foul on the Jags. So one senior, Tamarick Field, replaces another, Kyle Doyle. First free throw is good for uh, Allsmiller. Eagles are now up six. It has been 17 unanswered points. Not sure of the whistle. Which Byington having a conversation with the official, but Get the ball back to the Jags, and play continues. 
That's going to be an offensive foul on the Jags. That's three times a Jag. Uh, twice Ty, Tyvez Monroe has uh, penetrated and left his feet flying. Uh, tried to pass the ball and, and got called for the charge. Second foul on Tyvez. He's going to sit. When it rains, it pours. Tyvez Monroe was by far the most productive player early. Now he has to take a seat. I'd be tempted to play him. Kyle Doyle back in for the Jags. Score the basket for Allsmiller. Boy, it's been a rout. That's uh Yeah, it's 20 20, 20 straight, straight points. Yeah. Jags desperate to get something going here offensively. Got a foul on the Eagles. Got to praise the defense from Georgia Southern, making it very tough on Augusta. It's our media timeout, our last one of the first half, 319 to go. And the Eagles have opened up a 31-22 lead. Three nineteen to go, first half. Jags at one point, up 22-11. They now find themselves down 31-22. As the Eagles have uh, rattled off 20 straight points, hopefully McCall can put an end to that run. Much needed, much needed. Seven with three minutes to go. It could be worse. If he's, if he's able to make two, it could be seven. I tell you, I really would be <laughs> tempted to play Ty Bez Monroe. Um, well, it is an exhibition game. Yep. Yeah, but these guys are going to win. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a tough cover for Augusta. Tukey Brown here with the ball, an all Sun Belt performer. Morgan County High School, great. He scored over 3,000 points in high school. A pretty absurd notion. Ball gets batted up. and. Uh, Got to grab that, TC. Back into the hands of the Eagles. And Tukey. And a whistle. And I'm unsure of the whistle. Yeah, I got no, no idea. Yeah, me neither. I know Dip is, uh, I think, arguing for maybe a travel call. But why that would stop the game, I'm not sure. Now a 10-point Eagle lead. Mikel with the basketball. That's a good move by Kyle Doyle. And he scores the two. He's been good, too. Ike Smith, wow. These two guys are as good as advertised, Tukey Brown and Ike Smith. I know what the Jags get out of this. What do the Eagles get out of this? Reps? 
just playing? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, you want to play, and it doesn't count. So you just want to get out there and play. Uh, Georgia Southern gets a hungry opponent, one that, you know, is looking for a, you know, a little uh, bragging right. So you got to play hard. you got to perform. Look, just a few minutes ago they were down 11 on the road, you know, feeling the pressure. Now, obviously, the tables have turned. Um, you know, Georgia Southwestern Peach Belt team picked last in the Peach Belt, beat Troy, who won the Sun Belt and participated in the NCAA tournament last year, um, won uh, Georgia Southern's conference. So anything can happen right now. We see what's happening. Nice play by Mike Hughes. Last 90 seconds of the half. Another oh, foul on Dean. You know, uh, I just got to think Coach Mark Byington from Georgia Southern is beside himself with glee with all these charges being taken by his defensive uh, unit. It, it, it's been a, a good effort on both sides on defense, I think a little more so uh, recently here from uh, Georgia Southern. First foul on Dean. Here comes Tookie Brown again. He, he is a problem. I think we'll see a screen and roll here. Tukey's got seven points here in the half. It's just as bad when it comes from Mike Smith. He gets the switch for Dean Williams. Smith has 11. And down to five on the shot clock. Doyle against Brown. They retain possession. It's a couple times that the Jags uh, did well enough to make uh, the Eagles miss and didn't clean up the defensive rebound. Smith gets it back to Tukey. A lot of one on one from Georgia Southern. It's working. Here it is. And layup for Tukey Brown. He's got nine. He's good. And he steals, and the basketball gets stolen. And back to the Jags. It was a good job by Kyle Doyle avoiding the charge there. He almost uh, committed another one, but he, he, he did a good job avoiding it. Eagles will hold for the last shot here in the half. And a last second foul on the play. Fouls on Kyle. It's his second. Tookie Brown. Tookie's sister Alexis plays on the women's team. At Georgia Southern? Yeah. Okay. He's a real well-known guy around here, really lit the world on fire in high school, went to the Final Four, three out of four seasons, won a state title, knocked our Laney Wildcats out um, when they had won 29 games straight and looked headed for a state title in 2015. Tybez checks back in for the last 3.4 seconds. And that's going to be your half. We go to the locker room with your score. The Eagles, 42, and the Jags, 28.
and welcome back to Christenberry Fieldhouse on the campus of Augusta University along with Chad Cook and Blake Collins. I'm John Patrick. We are at halftime of our exhibition game this evening. The Jags and the Eagles from Georgia Southern. The Eagles lead the Jags 42-28. First half stats for you. Uh, the Eagles were 17 of 40 from the field for 42%. They were 3 of 15 shooting threes for 20%. And they were 5 of 5 from the free throw line. Now the Jags shot 50% from the field. That's the good news. The bad news is they only took 20 shots. Uh, they were 4 of 9 shooting threes for 44%. And they were 4 of 6 from the free throw line for 67%. You know, what really got the Jags is 13 turnovers. You mentioned the only 20 shots, and that's a killer. And um, uh, only one offensive rebound. So that was a strength. Uh, they out-rebounded Clemson 22-17 in the first half last night. But um, no such thing tonight. Ike Smith and uh, Tukey Brown lead the Eagles in scoring. They've got 11 points. Jared Hamilton has seven. Jake Allsmiller has seven. Monte Glenn with a pair, Mike Hughes with two, Coy Simmons with two. Jags are led by Kyle Doyle and Tyvez Monroe with six points. Michael uh, Coldstaff has five. TC's got four. Dean's got four. Aaron Bird has three. Again, at one point in the first half, Jags led 22-11, and the Eagles went on a 20-0 run. That's kind of the difference in the ball game now. Jags find themselves down by 14. What do you think? What do you think Dip told him at the uh, break? Well, what he told him and what he thought might be two different things. Because if I'm the coach, I'm uh, I'm at a loss, a little bit of a loss, because um, you kind of melted down as a team there, and so you know they're better than that, but you just don't know if they're going to uh, grasp that tonight and 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 get the wheels back on the ship. We're talking about a uh, what a four to thirty a thirty one four run. And that is, uh, that, that's like a blow to the stomach. We'll see if they can get it back on track. Mikel opens the second half with three. And he's got eight points. Mikel had three last night, so in his second game, he's looking more comfortable already. For the Jags, it's TC, Kyle, Tyvez, Mikel, and Dean Williams. And there goes Ike Smith. Ike Smith has been money. 14 for Ike out on the uh, court for the Eagles. Uh, Glenn Hughes, Smith, Brown, and Allsmiller. Ball did not fall, but it's going to be a foul on the Eagles. So the gentleman over here to our right, um, they, they brought some intensity to the game. They came in at halftime. This, it's one of the t uh, teams that's participating in the uh, City Classic. Yeah, City Classic. And I, I don't know which team it is, but they're, they're into it early for both sides. You know, you want to see Tyvez Monroe get back going here in the second half. He got off to such a great start, and then uh, committed a couple of charging fouls and had to go sit down for the last four minutes of the first half. He and Kyle both with two fouls and uh, misses both the free throws. Smith with the basketball now. Jag basketball. Here's that half court trap that gave him so much trouble. They attack it immediately there. I like that. And Dean Williams with the tap in. Nice little move by Kyle Doyle, but a better tap in by Dean Williams. Foul's going to be on the Jags. It's going to be on Dean. It's going to be his second. Team's first of the second half. It'll send Tukey to the line. 
he just went right at, uh, Tookie Brown went right at the Jags after that bucket on the other end and forced the issue. Reminded me of uh, the guard from Young Harris that we played against so many times the last few years. I can't remember his name. C.J. Wilson, such a um, tough competitor. Look at he's you he's pulling, gone now. Look at you pulling the name out. <laughs> Tukey makes them both. And again, the pressure. Much better job here in the second half so far of handling that half court trap. Ooh. 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 What a finish. Jared Hamilton with the basket there. I did not not see much it. you can do about that. No, I did not see that coming. TC fights for it. He gets it. We had a great look at Ty Vesman Rose jumper. He was right in front of us, and it looked like money in the bank, just like his two free throws did. Good job by Tamrick Fields to not give up on that play. It looked like he might have traveled but he uh, stayed with it and got the two points. Four points for TC. Jags down 14. Long three. Certainly a long three. Kyle Doyle's been a lot more aggressive this second half. Hasn't always turned out well for the Jags, but he did uh, draw the foul there. Fouls on Tukey. It's his second, team second. I get a sense, to your point, I get a sense Dip told him, you know, no, we're going to run a little bit in the second half. We're going to get the ball up there, stop, stop, you know. Being tentative. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I sense a new sense of urgency, especially against that half-court trap. They attacked it much cleaner. Lod throws something up there. Yeah, not a good possession there. They tried to get Tyvez Monroe off of this, what, I think what they call an elevator screen, and Colstaff didn't get it to him. Fadeaway shot from Ike is no good. Oh. But, but going to have a foul as McKell reached out and grabbed Hamilton. Boy, things aren't getting any easier for the Jags. You know, the Jags open up next Friday at Barton. We talked about that earlier. They'll play uh, Friday against Barton. Uh, no, Friday against Mount Olive at Barton and Saturday against Barton at Barton. Okay. It's a part of a four-team thing. They are not here at Christenberry Fieldhouse until the 25th. Correct. Against Bowie State. Tukey dishes off, and I believe that uh, Mike was on the line when he caught the basketball. So it's a turnover for the Eagles. You want to attack that thing. Now that they're getting the ball up the court, now you want to attack and get uh, good shots against that. That half court press. Lot again, a little trouble handling the basketball. Oh, goodness, that's a tough call. Third foul on Tyvez. All three fouls have been offensive fouls. I don't like that call at all. It seemed like he was being, uh, Tyvez Monroe was being hit. He'll have to sit on the bench again. Replaced by Aaron Bird. So Derek Oliver has his work cut out for him here. Tukey drives. Tukey scores. Tukey is fouled. That's such a tough matchup. You've got Vlad Kobzaru uh, switching out on the pick and roll. And he's just at the mercy of Tukey Brown. 
Dukes. That's the uh, first foul on Aaron. That's our media timeout, 15.59 to go. Eagles are up 51-35. Jaguars are thrilled to welcome back Jana King as a corporate partner of the Augusta University Athletics. For all your cleaning needs, keep Jana King in mind. Jana King is the king of clean. Again, just a reminder, we're playing this game for hurricane relief. You can text Red Cross to 90999 to give $10 to American Red Cross. Disaster relief helps people affected by disasters like hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, wildfires, and tornadoes. All of that may be in the past, the last six, seven weeks or so, but it's still going on. Oh, look at this. We've got a wave going on. <laughs> Tukey misses the free throw. Not even on education day do I remember a way. Are I think, we, are we I getting think this the, wave with the, with the camera? I think the visiting football team started it. Yeah, they did. Are, have we gotten the wave with the camera yet? I'm just curious. Not yet. Here we go. Let's see if we can catch it here. Well, why doesn't he get it here? Okay, cool. 51-35, Jags with the basketball. Derek. Down to six on the shot clock. Oh. Got to put it up. And TC scores the basket. Nice touch shot by Tamrick Fields. Kind of bailed out Kyle Doyle there. The guys are fighting. It's a, it's a tough task. It's a, it's a whole different level of basketball. as we'll see here with Tookie Brown. It's good defense by Aaron Bird there. Ball stays with the Jags. I'm sorry, ball went to the Eagles. Nice defense there by the Jags and then Kicked away. Good job getting on the floor by Aaron it. Bird. You could just see him getting ready to dive for that ball. He had to get within range. He was not going to cough that one up. A little sloppy, a little sloppy. Oh, my. Timeout got called, I believe. Hopefully Kyle's okay. He went down kind of awkward there. Yeah. That's not good. They're calling. Coy Simmons was like, somebody needs to get out of here. I think he's okay. You know, he went down yesterday and got up very slowly, and then he played like as if uh, he hadn't been hurt. So I hope it's that kind of situation. He's going to stay in. around like it's the first five minutes of my day. <laughs> Cal's an experienced player. He's, he's been at this a while. Got some bumps and bruises on him, I'm sure. Thought maybe Kyle had gotten the timeout. I guess they called it a jump ball, and it goes to the Eagles.
dookie has got 15 points. And a foul away from the basketball, I believe, on Sean O'Connell. And that is Sean's fourth foul. You know, the Jags are within reach. Um, and, you know, you see, you see Demetrius over there. He's coaching it just like it's January in the Peach Belt. You get a couple shots to go in, you never know. That will be something else we'll delve into as the year goes on, a different configuration yes. in the conference this year. I'm excited about that. It'll be, it's kind of old school. It's kind of like, you know, the old the home and home. You, you, you play everybody twice kind of thing. Yeah, Big Ten, Big Eight back in the yeah. day, ACC, SEC. There was no such thing as Eastern and Western divisions uh, when I was a young guy. What a great skyhook by Dean Williams. I look for him to have a great season. Look at Derek Oliver. And he commits the foul. That's eight for Dean, by the way. Dip. Derek's third foul. Sorry to interrupt. Dip's livid because he thinks that uh, the referee allowed Tookie Brown to call that foul for him. Tookie gave uh, Derek Oliver a pat on the back there. He knows he's uh, competing. Give him a little credit for it. Here's another tough one from Vlad Kobzaru. Oh, nice great. batted away by Dean. You know, we saw Dean with a great sky hook on one end. There's a big defensive play there. He, his teammates needed him. He had Derek Oliver caught up in the screen, and Vlad Kobzaru kind of defenseless on the switch. Great play by Dean Williams. Allsmiller back in for the Eagles. Two on the shot clock. Got to get it up. Not going to oh, make it. That's a travel. Shot clock violation. Much better uh, defense uh, out of that zone out of bounds than the one uh, earlier in the game when they gave up a three. See if they can handle this pressure. Jags have gotten it back to within 12. Who to go to? I would, I would think either Dean Williams or Tamrick Fields here. They're going for Tamrick. Nice play there. Battled out of bounds. It's a great look. Quan Jackson. That's a, that's a play we've seen run over the years for guys like Tommy Williams and, and now T Tamrick Fields. I expected to see for, uh, from Dean Williams this year a high low from big to big. Fields couldn't finish it that time. Dean spins and that's, shoots and scores. That's just beautiful. That is a beautiful finish by Dean Williams. I'm excited to see him in somewhat of a new role this season. It's a 10-point ball yeah. game. That's 10 for Dean, by the way. Going to be a foul here on the Jags. If that's going to be on Derek, that'll be his fourth. And it was not on Derek. I'm unsure who it was. Oh, it was on Dean. It's his third. Coach dip has been talking a lot about foul trouble. You see it tonight. Tyvez Monroe, Dean Williams, both with three. Does Kyle Doyle have three as well? Uh, yes, I believe so. That's three of your top four performers. And the team is not, I said it earlier, it's not as um, deep as in the past. You remember Jay Sean Brooks no longer yep. with us. Uh, ben Yursich no longer with us. Keyshawn Sherrill no longer with us. And besides Mikel Kolstad, he's the only new face that is seeing major minutes. So um, the, the, the Jags can't afford to have guys sitting on the bench, the key guys. Won't matter much if Ike Brown gets yeah. a lot more of that. Yeah, Smith now has, four, has 17. So Oliver and Bird have not looked as as sharp handling this pressure. They do they do get the ball across half court here though. Here's Dean Williams. I look look for him to do do some more. Puts his shoulder down and gets called for the foul. That's a tough call. That'll be four on Dean. So one guy with four gets replaced by another guy, Tyvez Monroe, with three. 
I uh, endorse that move by Dent Meech. was such a tough break for Dean Williams to get that charge. He kind of bailed out on the play. You almost think he got the charge because of the way he kind of Cam. quit on it, yeah. um, as opposed to it being a very clean uh, charge there. And another three for Ike. There's a reason why he and Tookie Brown are all league performers and have been for a couple of years, and they're only juniors. And they're, they're the reason why Georgia Southern's picked high in their conferences. Derek Oliver feeds Tamrick Fields for uncontested layup. Tookie is out of the ball game at the moment. There goes Ike again, back to the rim. That would have been three straight. Jags unable to clean up the rebound. Georgia Southern gets sloppy there. Tyvez has to be careful, lays it up left-handed. Excellent play by Tyvez Monroe. Nice play there by Jared Hamilton. And they're back up 13. Oh. A little tentative from Tamrick Fields. I would have thought he would have shot that ball on the first catch. Yeah, and turns it over. Nice follow up by Monte Glenn. And it's back to a 15 point Eagle lead. Blot is fouled underneath. It's going to be our media timeout, 10.21 to go. And the Eagles are up 60-45. Papa John's is the official pizza of the Jaguars. Better ingredients, better pizza. Call your nearest Papa John's location, 733-7272 or 651-7272. So this is the first uh, entry into the ball game of what is Troy's last name? Sorry, I should have had yeah, that we're, ready. We're learning all of this. Troy Cracknell, freshman uh, number 21, six foot four freshman out of Huntersville, North Carolina, Lake Norman Charter School. First time we've seen a freshman in this ball game. And they couldn't get the ball in, so we've got another timeout. Quick reminder: while we've got the timeout, you can text Red Cross to nine zero nine 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 and give 10 bucks to the American Red Cross Disaster Relief. It will help people affected by disasters like hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, fires, and tornadoes. It is interesting to note that one week after severe weather from Hurricane Irma began, the Red Cross in Augusta and its partners have provided more than 8,200 overnight stays to 2,700 people in 16 evacuation centers, served more than 17,000 meals, and close to 25,000 snacks, mobilized over 160 volunteers, provided 120 plus just-in-time volunteer, uh, shelter volunteer trainings to new volunteers, distributed over 2,400 cots, blankets, towels, and comfort kits. 
10-21 to go in the ball game. Jags find themselves down 15. Jags just want progress right now. There's an eternity left, a lot of time to work on things. They want to stay on the court. They want Tyvez Monroe and Dean Williams to be able to play some minutes here without fouling out. That looked much better from Tamrick Fields. Looked a little tentative earlier. He looked like he uh, had confidence in what he was doing on that play. DC's got 12. It'll be a travel call, turnover for the uh, Eagles. It is uh, TC, Derek, Tyvez, Troy, and Mikel in the ball game for the Jags. Wonder if Kyle Doyle um, did get injured earlier. He went out relatively soon after that and hasn't been back. Well, you know what? It's an exhibition game. It is? Sit him. Speaking of that, I'm just curious. Did you get a sense last night in Clemson Great pass, what the way. feeling was like with Deshaun Watson's injury? Well, it's an overwhelming just sadness, yeah. uh, you know, to the extent that you get sad about sports. Um, you know, I think that's, uh, you know, even from people who aren't Clemson fans. But, yeah, oh, sure. goodness. But, no, it did not come up. Yeah. Um, you know, we were, the Jags were fighting for their lives yesterday. Now, on that last play, a really nice pass from Troy Cracknell to uh, – to uh, Tamrick Fields from on the high low. We talked about that earlier. And then Fields hit Derek Oliver for the three. Cut it to 10. That's as close as the Jags have been this half. Fourth foul. I thought it was fourth foul on Derek. That's not popped up on my screen yet. Yeah, you know, I think you're right. I remember when he picked up his third. Just foul trouble galore. Made both the free throws. We've got a foul on the Jags. That's a foul on Derek, and that would be his fifth. Ooh. No, wait a minute. They're calling that on, I'm not sure what they're calling that on. Yeah, that's on Derek. Yeah. They put number two on the board, but it's number 12. That's five fouls on Derek. So I assume we'll see. Okay, we'll see Dean Williams here. So, you know, exhibition or not, Dib's running this yeah. thing like, uh, you know, he's trying to stay in it. And you want to you wanna defend your home court and not be, you know, run off the court. Um, it, it, it's a great crowd here tonight. It is a good crowd. I mean, it is a really good crowd. So under 10 to go in the ball game. Jags down 12. And uh, Derek Oliver has fouled out. Wow. You know, if Brown's not doing it himself, he's yeah. setting his teammates up. Mike Hughes with his fifth point. Jags taking a while to get it started out. TC drives right in. What a play by TC Fields. That was very nice. No quitting these Jags. This is just, this has been the unsolved puzzle tonight. Tookie Brown. Scores the two and draws the foul. 19th point for Tukey. You know, I would say that he does it against Augusta teams, but he does it against everybody, and that's why he's a, um, you know, a returning First team, all Sun Belt player. He will go to the line looking for his 20th point of the night. The uh, Eagles are now in the double bonus.
That's 20 points for Tukey. Back up to a 16-point lead. Extended minutes for Cracknell here. I bet you there's a little something wrong with Kyle Dale. Well, there's no harm in – I mean, it's an exhibition game. There's no harm at all. I'm just set – him, Set him down. Yeah, no harm at all. I'm just, you know, try, kind of trying to explain uh, – because I know – ooh, that was a – Kind of heard that up here. That was a blow. Oh, Dean's maybe sh shaking up a little over there. That will be five on Dean. Oh, that was Dean. That was a foul on Dean. Yeah. Okay. Well, Dean Williams now fouls out. Here's our media timeout. 7.53 to go in the ball game. Jags are up 68-52. Again, men's basketball hosts their first official game at home of the 2017-2018 season after Thanksgiving on the 25th against Bowie State. It's a 4 p.m. tip-off here at Chris and Barry Fieldhouse. Willie Jules Barbecue is a proud sponsor and supporter of the Jaguars. Visit Willie Jules Old School Barbecue, Riverwatch Parkway, or check them out, WillieJules.com. Back at Christenberry Fieldhouse, 7.53 to go in the ball game. Georgia Southern leads the Jags 68-52. Might be a bit of an unfair question, but now you've seen the Jags for a couple of nights yes. playing Division I ball clubs. Yes. Yeah, so give me a give me a thought process. What do you what do you think we have here? Well, I think the team's strength is that front line, uh, Kyle Doyle, Dean Williams, and uh, and uh, Tambrick Fields, along with Tyvez Monroe, a big, strong guard. And the fact that it has been successful, not for 60 or 70 minutes so far, but maybe for about 35 of those minutes against a couple very good Division I schools, I think that translates well to Peach Belt action. Um, size that is able to execute at this level should be able to execute at that um, at that Peach Belt level. The question is going to remain, are we going to be able to score enough points? Because Peach Belt teams may not be big, but they can put the ball in the hole, mm -hmm. and there's you know scorers everywhere, shooters everywhere, usually three, four guards on the court. So you got to be able to score, too. Do you and, say that because you don't see a dominant scorer So yet? far, for, certainly. And you've seen the last two seasons with Keyshawn Sherrill. He didn't take the the rain so much because he wanted to he did because he had to and a lot of these players now are, are ready for that role I think but they have to prove it on the court there's no reason why a Tamarick Fields or a Dean Williams can't go out and get 15 to 20 points um, you know one of those two guys two or those three guys on a regular basis in Peach Belt play but we've got to see it PC's shot is in and out. A good looking shot there. He's been he's been, he's played much better this second half. Tamrick Fields has. It's a shame we won't see Dean Williams again. Um, I thought he was very good today. I think he could stand to get some easy baskets. He gets a lot of uh, uh, tough shots, uh, hard to make shots. Dean leaves the ball game with uh, ten points. Jags have now gotten it up to almost 54% shooting from the field. They're just not taking enough shots. Yeah. 21 of 39. The Eagles are 26 of 57. See, the thing about Georgia Southern, they don't do a lot offensively as far as sharing the ball or moving their ball in their bodies, but they always get a shot off because somebody between uh, Tookie Brown or Ike Smith has the ball in their hands, and they get an opportunity for either themselves or others, as you see Tookie Brown right there with an uncontested layup. It's 22 for Tookie, and Ike's got 19, so there's uh, there's 40-some 40, 40 points of their 72 right there. 
And that's par for the course. You know, Dip Mitras told me yesterday, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this, that he thinks those two guards, Ike Smith, as we see Tamron Fields with a nice jump shot there. Uh, those two guards, Tookie Brown and Ike Smith, are better and more able to score the ball than the Clemson guards, for instance. Hmm. He said, if you put the Clemson guards on this Georgia Southern team, they're probably not as good, and they're definitely not as dangerous offensively. And that's how good these guys are. You know, Tukey Brown is a Keyshawn Sherrill type. Yeah, it, it, he does give you that impression. Stukey with the basketball there. And there's three Wow. Four. And that's at the buzzer of the shot clock. Hats off to Tukey Brown. 25 points. Basically an Augusta legend by now, and he's deserved that. And Mikel Coldstaff drives down the lane, gets the left-handed basket. Much better game from him today. He looks like he's getting more comfortable. Man. Long basket by Altsmiller. And that's created by Brown, you know, putting so much pressure on the defense. It'd be a fun team to watch. It watch, would. Watch a guy like that just really light it up on a regular basis. We actually got to see yeah, I was, that. <laughs> I was going to say, we spent the last three years watching that. Selfish of me to want another Keyshawn Sherrill already. Got to love the crowd reaction there. TC's got 18. So let me let me let me rephrase my earlier question. When uh, when they get back to practice, gonna be a foul there. What are they working on? Well, you know, about practice, it's interesting. They played uh, Anderson, Col Anderson University Monday in a scrimmage, a, a controlled scrimmage. They took Tuesday off. They practiced Wednesday for Clemson. Now they've got back-to-back -back Division I games. They will, I think, take tomorrow off. They're back on the road in a scrimmage against Carson Newman on Sunday. Oh, okay. So four games in six days, or four game-like experiences yeah. in six days. So when it's all said and done and they do get back to basics, it's a great question. I think I think Coach Dip is looking for his freshman to give him something. Um, you see them not him not going to them until deep into this ball game, and he's going to need you know more than six or seven guys as the season goes yeah. along. Matias Savano is in the ball game for the Jags. Matias from Finland. Foul on the uh, Eagles. Good to see Tyvez um, continuing to grind away, compete. He gets himself to the foul line there. Kind of had a start and stop night with the foul yeah. trouble. Quan Jackson, his first foul. It's the seventh team foul, so the Jags are in the bonus for the last five minutes of the ball game. Tyvez having a hard time from the free throw line. Yeah, that's over three this half. I know that's got to bug him. It's just a steady diet of Tookie Brown here tonight. Wow. It's going to be called for traveling. An impressive athletic feat there by yeah. T.C. Fields to hurdle the Georgia Southern player. That is Savanto there. T.C. Score two more. He's got 20. Well, I guess I did say earlier that a guy like T.C. Fields can give you 50, 15 to 20 on a regular basis, and he proves me right there. Now he's got the unenviable task of guarding Tukey Brown. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Gets it to Paul. Wow. Wow. 27 for Tukey. I'm going to go out on a limb and say we won't see a better player in Christenberry Fieldhouse this season than Tukey Brown. 
Here's our final media timeout, 3.53 to go in the ball game. The Eagles lead the Jags 82-60. to 60. Augusta University Athletics recognizes Augusta Coca-Cola for its longtime support of the Jaguars and all of its student athletes. Coca-Cola is the official Powerade and bottled water supplier for the Jaguars. You know, they, they uh, released the all-conference uh, team, uh, Peach Belt, Pre -season. Recent, recently. Yes, yeah, so I've been looking at those names from time to time, and there's just nothing like Tookie Brown on that list. <laughs> <laughs> Jags uh, ranked by their coaches uh, number two in the conference. Tough stuff where, you know, you don't have an all-league performer yeah. by the coaches' votes, yeah. but you do have the high expectations of finishing second after you lose the conference's all-time leading scorer. But the same poll had Georgia Southwestern last, and they beat Troy, the Sun Belt champions, uh, a couple days ago. So you know what polls are worth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Both free throws are good for uh, Quan Jackson. First couple of points in the ball game. Again, Georgia Southern sticks with the with the full court pressure. You know, you tend to forget as you as you watch your home team and you watch how they respond to the pressure that the other team's working on their full court pressure. Sure. You know, they're working on stuff, too. Sure. That was a great, great that. score by Mikel Colstead. He has um, really come alive today. He's got to be in double figures. And he's got uh, 12, I believe. Yes. Here we go with the Tookie Brown show again. Brown with 27 points in the evening. Just killing time. And still gets the assist. You know things are going your way when you get yeah. an assist, assist like that. From the ground. Foul on Jackson. Going to be his second. 18th foul. TC at the line, got 20 on the night. Good night for TC. That's got to be something Dip takes away from the night. Yeah, I think everybody is expecting a lot out of him and happy to see him uh, get some rhythm tonight. He was uh, 5 for 17 last night. It was good to see him being aggressive. Shots di just didn't fall, and they really started to tonight in the second half. So now the Jags apply a little pressure. You know, TC's been a double-figure scorer now the last two seasons, so he's uh, definitely proven he can carry that load. And then bats that away. Sure does. Puts it up again. Gets two more. TC Fields out of Aquinas High School. 24 points tonight for TC.
Ball's thrown away. I love that Dimitris is keeping the, you know, the main players in throughout this game. You know, you defend your home court, you, you play the whole 40 minutes, you get the most out of it you can. BC cannot convert that time. And there's no telling what these last several minutes will have done for uh, Tamarix. Uh, sure. Uh, confidence. Yeah, confidence. Yeah. And just having the repetitions of having to score from different angles consistently throughout a game, not something he had to do often when Keyshawn Sherrill played on this team. Last 90 seconds of the ball game. Full staff with the basketball. Mikel drives on in. Dishes out. A little European action there. Tyvez could have gotten called for the foul there, but was not. Beautiful shot. Tyshawn Crawford in the ball game. He's a 270 pounds, seven foot one, fresh freshman. Exactly. Freshman. I think that's the most likely candidate to be a Garrett Siler one day. Holy cow. Foul was on Quan Jackson, his third. And uh, Troy Cracknell will go to the line. You know, I don't know if you follow the high school football or not, but Richmond Academy is leading Thompson 31-28 in the final week of the season. Mm. Thompson was uh, ranked number two in the state before last uh, week's game against number five, Burke County. Burke County pulled off the home win against the Bulldogs, and now looks like they've been caught uh, taking Richmond lightly. Richmond fighting for, I think, it's the fourth spot in that region's playoff scene. Somebody stepped into the line, maybe TC, and negated the second free throw. So again, the Jags will open up their season next week and uh, will not be here at Christenberry Fieldhouse until after Thanksgiving, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. The offseason went fast, right? We're back in here. It always does. Pretty soon. See just how many Jag, how many games the Jags play. Uh, to your point, the Jags will uh, take on Mount Olive next Friday, and then Barton on Saturday, and then on the 18th, uh, they're at West Georgia, and on the 21st before Thanksgiving at Benedict. So the Jags will have four games under their belt before uh, coming to Christenberry on the 25th. That's your final score. The uh, Eagles beat the Jags 88-67. Eagles were 20, 32 of 66 from the field for 48%. They were 8 of 23 for uh, shooting threes for 35%. 16 of 17 from the line for 94%. Jags were 27 of 49 from the field. 27 of 50 from the field for 54%. 6 of 14 shooting threes for 43%. 7 of 13 from the line for 54%. Tukey Brown with 27 points for the Eagles. Ike Smith had 19. Gerald, Jared Hamilton with 13. Jake Allsmiller with 10. Co uh, Coy Simmons with 6. Mike Hughes with 5. Monte Glenn with 4. Sean O'Connell had 2. Quan Jackson had 2. Tamrick Fields led the Jags with 24 points. Mikel Coldstaff had 12. Dean Williams with 10. Tyvez had 8. Kyle had 6. Aaron Bird with 3. Derek Oliver with 3. And Troy Cracknell had a point. So again, we're not back until the 25th when the Jags return to Christenberry Fieldhouse to take on Bowie State for Chad Cook, for Blake Collins. I'm John Patrick. Thanks for being here this evening. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We'll see you on the 25th. Good night, everybody.